It's bad. Enemy. Hey everybody, my name is John. And my name is Rob, and I'm so fucking annoyed. This was one of the most agonizing experiences <laughs> I've recently had with anime. That came off way cleaner in my head. But anyway, hi. Thank you. Either way, um, the sentiment is here, uh, is with me as well, uh, because you know what we watched, everybody? We watched Garzy's Wing, all three episodes, all three OVAs. This isn't a three-episode rule. It was just convenient enough that it was three episodes. It's not, but that really is nice, though. I can label <laughs> it as that, and I might. <laughs> we'll see how we'll see how we feel in post. It's it's Saturday, and we're relaxed. I'm drinking a local crafty boy. That's my that's what I call Ooh, craft. Beers. What kind of cra- what kind of crafty? Um, it's comes from Barrier Brewing, you know, the most local oh, to, yeah. to where you and I grew up. And I got their top water premium lager. It tastes like every craft premium lager, meaning it's usually really good. It's called top water. It's called top water, yeah. Not tap water. Like instead of instead of tap water, it's top water. Yeah, with the O. That's so fucking clever, honestly. <laughs> See, <it's... laughs> okay, the look on your I face. The look that. on your face there was great. Where it was just like <gasps> you were, you were like impressed, but like you were like there was a smile on your face. You know what I mean? I'm like angry, impressed, uh, which is what <laughs> I've been experiencing that emotion a lot lately. Angry, impressed. Yeah. Oh, I've, I've experienced it too. Of, oh, like like so. Garzy's wing, right? <laughs> um, angry, angry, impressed is uh, what I I would agree with as my uh, as my feelings about this whole three episodes. Like a general sentiment, a general sentiment of like angry or so angry that I'm kind of impressed by it. Because <laughs> so let's let's walk through how we how we stumbled upon this because I I suggested this one this yes, time you did. around. Um, you know why? Because I was watching some uh, trash taste on YouTube. Nice. And the guys were talking. And they were like, yeah, like. You know, I, I forget what episode I clicked on. It was probably had something to do with, like, what kind of chicken fingers they like. They literally don't talk about anime anymore. But it was You know, like... it's so funny because we started this po- – because I've seen Trash Taste when we started recording this podcast, and you didn't. So I love how now, like, <laughs> as I'm watching them less and less, you're watching them more and more. I just find that dichotomy right? very interesting. Right? My YouTube did a complete 180 because I started clicking on their videos, and then all of a sudden my algorithm's like, oh, you like these guys. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Yeah. I enjoy them. <laughs> oh. So they were talking, and like they were talking about like chicken fingers or cheeseburgers. Probably Actually, it was probably cheeseburgers because one of the guys was complaining that he doesn't like the the, the burger in Japan, which is just like a, che- a burger. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I remember, I remember that episode causing a bit of a stir. And then right. as someone who has plenty, had, 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 had plenty of hamburger steaks, I'm just like, Can I, where's the bun? I'm just like, I'm wait, wait, see, that's what I thought. But I was like, I don't I mean, like, it's not like that big of a deal. But at the same time, I'm just used to a bun and cheese, you know? Well, the thing it's is basically like a completely different what a hamburger situation. steak is, is essentially, in my mind, it's a small hunk of meatloaf with like cheese on it right. at that point. Because that, at that point, right. just give me like more. Don't call it a hamburger steak. Just give me a giant fucking meatloaf. If, right. Give me a meatloaf then, yeah. right? Not like a little baby little like McDonald's Because I've had some here. hamburger steaks where like they pour a bunch of gravy on it and shit. I'm like, this is meatloaf. This is just, this is just, <laughs> this is just sad meatloaf. They like put peas on it and it's like an Irish grandmother making it like, this is a shepherd's pie. <laughs> <laughs> what? I've been eating a lot of shepherd's pie lately too. Really? What? How has your how has your poop been as a result? Oh, my poop's always wild. I mean, with my schedule, my constant <laughs> caffeine consumption, and you know my on and off switch alcoholism. Um, so that's those three C's: constant caffeine consumption, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the first syllable in consumption is cum. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. <Whoa>. Wow. <laughs> I'm doing you it right are. now. It's so much fun; it should be illegal. <laughs> but uh. That's why it rhymes with fun. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, but, but yeah, so, they were so, talking about hamburgers. Okay, and then somehow, they were talking about hamburgers. I'm sorry about the coherence of this episode, to everybody listening. No, don't worry, uh, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> it's garbage. Okay, there. Right, there's no coherence in the actual show. We're not so talking about high art here. That? There's nothing debatable about this one. <laughs> um. So. Uh, they were talking about like some kind of hamburger, some kind of food, and then somebody mentioned like, "Is it as bad as Garzy's wing?" And everyone was like, "Oh my god, I don't think anybody could be as bad as Garzy's wing." And uh-huh. I was like, "What the fuck is Garzy's wing?" So <laughs> I looked it up, and I find out right, it's a three episode OVA, came right. out in 1996. Right. Uh, the runtime total is 30 minutes per episode, so about an hour and a half. You got an hour and a half. And I was film, like, "All yeah. right." 
right? I was like, okay, so where do we where do we start with this? So I looked it up. You can find it on YouTube. The best part about the uh, YouTube video for Garzi's Wing is that if you if you found the version that I found, or if you end up trying to watch it, which yeah. I mean probably don't, but we'll we'll see if you want to at we'll, the end of this. We'll keep um, talking about that. I I clicked on the video and the first thing I noticed was it started very abruptly and I was like, what the hell is this? And I scrolled down to the comments and it was like, oh, by the way, the episodes are out of order in this video. Yeah. Here's the first one starts sec is the second episode. And then Third, it goes, and it then goes first. three. It goes right. It goes two, three, one, two, three, one. And I'm like, am I watching Star Wars? <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. So, well, yeah. The problem is you're not too far off for one reason, and this made my heart sink when I had this realization. Because um, uh-huh. as I was watching this anime, you know, the first, of course, the first emotion was just constant annoyance because immediately the show starts <laughs> and it's just dialogue. And I remember texting you, I'm five minutes in and no character shut up yet. The pace of this is out of control. It's insane. And here's what happened in my head. I'm like, this feels more like a compilation film than it does like an actual OVA. And the joke mm-hmm. I made to myself was like, this this, this seems like Yoshiyuki Tomino did cocaine on his worst day. And then my heart sank because I looked at the director and it was fucking Yoshiyuki Tomino. No! Yeah. I was so upset. I'm like, no. Oh my, my God. guy. You did it again, you dumbass. Oh. No, you cokehead, you. God well, damn it. Well, I, I talk about him a lot because um, in my What head, are some other things he directed? Has he directed anything that I may have seen, you think? Gundam. Oh. He's... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I've actually never watched Gundam. Yeah, I know. Um, but but he... I have... Um, well, technically I have now, but you know, that's another episode for another day. We'll get day. to that, but no, but basically he is the creator of many a thing, but, but by far his obvious most famous work is basically the enti- almost the entirety of the Universal Century Gundam series. So the original Gundam, wow. Zeta, double Zeta, up until Victory Gundam, probably in the early nineties. So wow. that's his most famous work, obviously. And here's the problem with Yoshiki, Yoshi, Yoshi Kitomino, because I've watched a ton of his stuff now. Mm-hmm. When it comes to any creative project, there's two very important core components at the very core. It doesn't matter if it's music, anime, a play, whatever. Concept and execution. Mm-hmm. I always say that Yoshiyuki Tomino is one of the best concept man, men in anime. Like he, He's good at coming up with, with core ideas and running with them. His execution is notoriously sloppy. I mean, ah, hence why... I see. the. The first Gundam series, it became really popular, not in its original run, but when they released the three compilation films where he trimmed out some of the narrative, he cut out some elements that he didn't really want to include, but he was forced to, and he, and he reconsidered some shit. His execution uh-huh. is never the best. And, and you know, sometimes there's been one or two ex- notable examples. I think Gundam F9, F91, or F19, I'm trying to remember. That one was notorious for a lot of the same reasons this was, where the plot was so dense and only an hour and a half, where it's just constantly conveying information at you, where nothing can oh breathe. God. And it, so yeah. g- going through like just the first episode of this alone, I was like, tell me knows at it again. Man, because I, I, I can understand that now because th- y- you were correct in your text that like nobody can shut the fuck up mm-hmm. because Oh my God. Like, I don't know if it was just the, I think we watched the English dub. We did. But I don't know if it was just the English dub version, uh, but it wasn't man, a dub. That, like my first comment was, wow, this shit's moving. Like yeah. there's just conversation dialogue. You got to pick up on everything. There are so many names at first to know about the, the whole thing starts when like, uh, so the main character's name is Chris. I know that much because Chris everybody Chiaki, else yeah. has a, f- yeah, right, because everybody else has, like, a wild name, like Zendaya or something. Yeah. Uh, but his name is Chris. Yeah, for, and that's another trope of Tomino's. He loves including, like, characters who are distinctly races other than Japanese. He's always done that. Mm-hmm. He's done it in yes. Gundam numerous times, and it's just something he likes to play with that element of adding different cultures into his world. So, again... And that was interesting, because there came times where I was like, oh, this guy's like a like an Alexander the Great-looking kind of guy. Like, yeah. there's an Egyptian kind of sect over here. There's yeah. like a Pilgrim sect over here. There's like a lot of different kinds of people in this movie. Exactly, there are, and it's really cool to see. But, here, again, here was the problem. <laughs> I don't know what any of these cultures are. I don't know who any of these people are. 
because they just kept throwing names at you. And it's not the dub's yeah. fault. We'll get to the dub in a second. Mm-hmm. But yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you watch it and look at listen very just look at this fucking show, there's constantly mouths moving. They're constantly expositing. Yep. It, All the, the, time. the show is either expositing or showing you some pretty shot dodgily animated fight scenes. It's mm-hmm. it's weird because sometimes the fight scenes can look good. Like in one episode there'll be like one or two sequences in a fight scene that'll be pretty well animated. And then mm-hmm. it's clear it's like, well, there's the money because the rest of it kind of looks like shit. Right. It it doesn't look good uh for the most part. And also like it, it I kind of segmented it episode by episode even though it's like okay. it's really hard to keep track of like what exactly happened in each episode but i have like a kind of an overarching idea i took some notes so as i was saying i, I have a general idea of what happened um i based right. it i based it primarily on how right. each episode ends mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i needed to get like refreshed on it but i didn't uh <sighs> but a good thing like when i watched it though i took like a lot of notes so i kind of know like where every episode is but like the first episode right. kind of takes us through this uh he's like talking to this girl rumiko is her name and uh mm-hmm. he's like i'll be back after the sem- semester and pool party and i was like what's the yeah. pool party about and then he drives <laughs> off in a motorcycle and then he gets snatched by some fucking bird and then just, he's some just, giant like, swan i don't know what right and it just takes him into the sky and then he's naked um and i think correct me if i'm wrong rob mm-hmm. is this an isekai oh it's totally an isekai Okay, okay, thank you, good. Because I was thinking the whole time, I was like, is this an isekai? Because he's like in the real world, but then he's got another version of himself that's in the whatever fantasy world, and they're connected via this like, these like necklace or the beads mm. of some kind, like a like anal beads or something. They're yeah, he's basically, he's basically wearing silver anal beads around his neck, and like it's some, <laughs> it's some gift from his grandmother or something, a hardcore gift from your grandma, I know. But, um... It's like I, they kind of they kind of try to imply that that necklace has something to do with why he could exist in both worlds. It's mm-hmm. kind of confusing at first because they don't really explain how there's a divide here. Because yes, he gets taken up by the swan, but like his right. it's not exactly his spirit, but that's kind of how it feels at first. But right, so you don't know if it's his soul. But what happens is so basically he just kind of gets split in two, and there's Chris in the real world and Chris in the fantasy world. This could have been way more interesting if they fleshed this out a little bit. Like, how cool yeah. how cool would it have been if they actually split parts of its personality? Right. Like, let's say his... Right. Whole, that would be so much cooler, actually. Like, the part of himself that feels, like, a little more like, oh, I can't talk to girls and stuff like that. And, yeah. like, you know, not confident. And then the other side of himself that's, like, uber confident and, or, you know... Or, or even just morally. Think about how cool it would have been if, like, his heroic half went to the fantasy world, but his asshole yes. self was in the real world destroying mm-hmm. his life. You know yeah. what I mean? That there, would be really cool. There could have been there could have been cool ideas here. And even even so, the core idea of what this anime was trying to do actually kind of all right. Cuz here's the thing no one talks mm-hmm. about. This is kind of this is a sort of a standalone spin-off if you will from mm-hmm. another Tomino work. I'm forgetting the name of it. I think it was Dunbine. I'm not really sure off the Dunbine. top of my head. Mm-hmm. But basically, it's also set in this world of Byston Well. It's this mm-hmm. fantasy world. And it, this has nothing to do with the series, the, like the forty-something episode series that Tomino did, but it's set in the same mm-hmm. universe. So mm-hmm. I think that might be part of why interesting things didn't really get explained here too well, because because he's thinking, okay, if like, you're here, if you've seen this, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you know what it is, basically. It's, interesting, exactly. So mm-hmm. that might be part of the case, mm-hmm. but then again, um, who knows what he was thinking or what anyone was thinking in the production of this at the time? Mm-hmm. Because they should have known, hey. These characters won't stop talking. And unfortunately, here's another thing with Tomino. He's also a novelist. Some, oh, sometimes, okay. A lot of times when novelists try to write screenplays, they get way caught up in dialogue. The best mm-hmm. example is Stephen King. If you watch, because he did his own version of The Shining uh-huh. after the movie. He did like a... a really? He did like I a, didn't even it know was, that. It was a TV miniseries. And oh. one of the core complaints was it was just nonstop dialogue. Because, again, he's a novelist Mm -hmm. getting lost in the dialogue. So I can see Tomino going a little ham and everyone around him not wanting to rock the boat a little bit. Not wanting to tell him no. Because at this point, you remember, it was 96. So let's say we had an introduction in 95. It's, you know, Gundam was already like 16 or so years old. So he he proved his ground. And Tomino had successes even before Gundam. 
So no. So who's gonna who's gonna tell this guy? No, you're, you're exactly. wrong. Exactly, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. And also, it's a three episode OVA, so they might have thought, oh, "Who gives a shit?" You know. Let's yeah. let's let them have mm-hmm. fun. So who knows? But yeah. again, the core concept here is this kid gets tr- 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 taken up by the giant fucking swan. Yeah, because right. into this, another world because. This, like, tribe of former slave people are trying to break away from, like, their medieval, like, oppressors. And this one That's priestess right. is, like, praying for a holy warrior to come. And somehow the swan chooses Chris. And suddenly he's dropped in this world. They're like, you're the holy warrior. and That's Garzy's wing! And then suddenly he has fucking giant wings coming out of his feet. And now he's a superhero. Yeah. Because he's that one character from Smash Bros. Apparently, I don't know. Yeah, he's a fucking Pit. <laughs> he's Pit. He just became Pit. He is Pit. This is a Kid Icarus spinoff. Exactly. Um, yeah. Well, here's the thing. No, the, that's exactly what it is. Think about that concept, though. A, a kid getting wow, like thrust into a fantasy world, trying to free all these slaves. That's a, in, in and of itself. It's a pretty cool idea. And mm-hmm. the entire time, he's trying to free these people, but also free himself from this world because. This is a big thing with early isekais, like anything in the 90s. The end goal of an isekai protagonist, almost always in that time, was to get back mm-hmm. to their own world. And we see that here with Chris as well. He's using, right. throughout the the whole thing, he's like, you, he's talking to other Chris, trying to use technology and trying to figure out advantages of how to help these slave people so he can eventually right. get back to his own world. So mm-hmm. he, he's trying to free of co- like a colony of slaves and himself. Cool. It's inherently okay. a good concept. Or no okay. See, okay, this is why, because I didn't catch any of that. Yeah, no. I did not get any of that. Oh my god. I didn't read like any plot synopsis on this either. So mm-hmm. like I'm just going off like the hour and a half that I sat and watched, and that was not clear to me at all. <laughs> yep. But now that you spell it out that way, it does sound like a cool plot and something that could have been built upon in a good way. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there was just so much dialogue and so much shit that I was hung up on because the second he got to this isekai land or like the fantasy land, everybody's like talking to him and telling him this stuff. And there's all this like weird jargon that everybody has that never gets resolved. And I'm always like, what are they talking about? What are all these names? Like I have quotes here that are like, um, Garzi, somebody like was talking to him and they were like oh it's garzi's wing it's not what i wanted what i want is hikaru narutako mikyoto yes. and i was like what the fuck is that exactly <laughs> he says that several and times and like it's, okay now i know they're they're former slave people or they're trying to get freed they're slaves i'll be honest the only reason i caught it that any of this because i did i did rewatch parts of it because it moves so fast gotcha. I, re- I had to rewind i'm like wait i don't understand this Gotcha. I was just like, I got to get this over as soon as possible. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna. You I'm know what just actually just reminded me a lot of, and I feel sorry. I feel like I'm, con- I feel like I'm constantly cutting you off. I'm sorry, but I'm excited. About no, this. no, it's fine. This had the same problem as fucking Angel Sanctuary. If you remember that one, absolutely, it did. I was gonna bring that up because Angel Sanctuary, your entire just- body just fucking flailed. Because Angel Sanctuary is my least favorite thing that we've watched, maybe besides Redo of Healer. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the, my least favorite thing that we've watched because it was just all exposition, but for no purpose. There was nothing. But Angel Sanctuary, maybe I could even give it a pass because there's a lot more episodes that I didn't watch. No, there's only but, two more, so. <laughs> oh, well, t- still, Bo, still, though, there's more episodes that I didn't watch. For this one, I was like, okay, what the fuck is the great Baharaja tree? Yeah. And they never they never talk about it ever again. Well, I mean, they talk about it a few times. They but talk about it at the end. What is it? Like, well, what because, is it? Like, what does it do? What makes it even more confusing is at the fucking end of this thing, he, he him and um, the girl from the real world. The priest the priest girl? Oh, the girl, uh, Rumiko or whatever? Yeah, his girlfriend. Him and Rumiko are yeah. driving in the real world and goes, oh, there's the tree. And it's like the trees in the real world too. Is the it, fuck is this? That's the thing. Like, is it is it like the connecting point between the two worlds? That'd be cool, but like, I can only imply that is never fucking explained properly. But like, let me um yeah let let me tell you just how everything was not explained properly because my notes are all um quotes okay and things like that oh. um and episode one was okay you know they did the isekai thing they brought him to the fantasy world he's got garzi's wing right he beats up a couple of enemies um when one of the enemies is you know defeated he goes mm. he actually literally says i am defeated um 
And he's like, I am defeated. And then he looks at like that priest girl that Chris yeah. meets in the fantasy land. And he's like, that woman. And it just feels like this whole thing felt like it was an abridged. Yes. Like yes. this felt like a Yu-Gi-Oh! Dragon Ball Z, a team four star shit. It all felt like an abridged series, like how funny and like ridiculous it was and how fast paced it was. Yes. Because, all right, because after episode one, all that happens and he has his first fight. And now in episode two, they're traveling together mm -hmm. uh, in this fantasy world. And everybody's pissed at Chris because he can't unlock Garzi's wing uh, anymore. Again. He yeah. did it the one time. And he's like trying to do it again. And then everybody else, like there are all these em enemies popping up. This like th the Alexander the Great guy that I mentioned before. Yeah. Like he's like Egyptian. Uh, his name is Zaguzo, I think. Uh, he he likes his line is, it is best to put a Jay Gruba roll at the Jabu Jabu will lead us to the great Barju tree. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> give, give, me, give me any context. It's just so ever. much random exposition. It is random exposition, and none of it uh, is completed. Um, but something that made me absolutely die in the second OVA um, was uh, somebody, one of the, I guess, prisoners mm -hmm. uh, that works with Chris uh, was, like, lacing an arrow, like, lacing it with poison or something. Right, right. Chris says, yeah. it's what we, that's what we call a drug, drug in, in my, my world. world. Yeah. And the guy that laces the arrow is like, yeah, if you taste it or you smoke it, you get happy and do crazy things. And then Chris is like, yes, it's a bit dangerous. It's <laughs> like, what is this dialogue? The best was the one line that's now very famous and like used to describe the show a lot where it's like Chris, I think he's in the first OVA actually, he just screams, I must make sense of our convoluted situation. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the fucking show. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is just us trying to make sense of a convoluted situation. Um, and then there's like fucking and yeah. people riding animal, like giant monsters. Yeah. And then like, there's oh, all this we shit. have to fight the beast people. And I'm like, um, are they the same people you're fleeing cap captor? captor like, are, they, are these the same right. people and who oppressed you or no? The, they fight these animals too. Like at the end of episode two, they are fighting like this Hydra kind of creature and they keep yeah. calling it a, what is the word? A, a Duraga roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, that sounds like a, you know, I don't know. A that shitty sounds like microwave something dinner. that I would, right? Like a Duraga roll. <laughs> yeah. Like it sounds like a hot, like a cousin to the Hot Pocket mm -hmm. and it's a Hydra. And I'm like, what the fuck is a Duraga roll? And they just call these animals also different names. And then everybody has their distinct names. And then they call every tree a name. So you just don't know what's going on half the time in this. I don't, and even, then, I don't even know what the characters' names are aside from Chris. I, I only remembered it was Chris when I, when I looked at my notes today. Otherwise, I would have had no idea. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, then you get episode three. And they're like, they fight a bunch of like raptor riders and yeah stuff. and at that so, point the the chris in like weird. the chris in like the real world who the chris in the fantasy world is constantly having dialogue with the chris in the real world was like hey make gunpowder and so basically because gunpowder you can make with natural resources so that's right chris the, in the, the, um, the modern world, chris yeah yeah, yeah was, told him how to make gunpowder <laughs> and so so fantasy chris and all like the the the, uh, the former slaves made a bunch of bombs and it's like okay nice i think I think Yoshiyuki Tomino just wanted to add some explosions in his fantasy show, but whatever. So there's a bunch of yeah. fighting. Eventually, he gets Garzi's he gets Garzi's wings back, and I think he stabs someone in the heart. And then yeah, I remember that. I don't know who that person was in context. Neither do I. I just I have no idea who they were fighting. It was just so funny because like sometimes when you watch a dub of an anime you can like still do other things like you know you can look away for a second you can answer an email you can cook this i had to stare at and i still don't know what was going on that's why i had to re same that's why i had to rewatch it because like for a while it's out because of all the jargon it mm. sounded like a different fucking language yeah and also it didn't yep. help that the dub this dub performance was probably the funniest dub performance i've heard in a very long time oh if not the funniest god because the voices were absolutely hilarious that's why i thought it was that's why i compared it so much to an abridged because it yeah. sounded like the voices were trying to be annoying yes <laughs> which is everyone just, everyone was, was had terrible. like a everyone had like a monotone yell talk where it was like hello yes. chris now it's time for us to fight 
that was that was so good because that's exactly what it was and everybody had that like cadence too where nobody's sentence ended normally everybody's sentence had to end like with like a hard stop it's almost like they were every line they recorded on vo the person just immediately like hit the record button again after they finished recording and exactly and like there was no like trail off it was always just like we are going to fight now with knives (laughs) <laughs> and it's a hard cut like that it was so it, it didn't even res- remotely resemble natural human speech and no. it was jarring to listen to and people point to this dub a lot because now the big thing with this show is that mm. a lot of people compare it to tommy wiseau's the room ah uh, i can a, see a lot of people I say it's that. so bad it's good that's what a lot of people say about yeah. this show mm-hmm. um what do you think did you? Here's the thing. Okay, so spoilers. We both think this is bad. Yeah, it's 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 horrible. It's it, it's, it's shit. so bad. It's shit. But here's Absolute the question. Shit. Here's the question. Is it so bad that it turns around to being enjoyable? That's the que- that's a good question for us to answer right now. See, the thing is, I don't think it's. I don't think it can even be enjoyable. At least to me personally, because mm-hmm. when I look at something like The Room, right? When I look at bad media. Or like shitty shows or shitty movies that are, oh my god, this is so funny. It's a cult classic. I feel like this, there's no pacing. So it can't give you a chance to even like enjoy how stupid it is because it just keeps going. It's you know? just so like, fucking annoying. Never like, right? There's never a pause. There's not like a pause where after somebody says a hilarious line, you know, that may not have been funny to them, but yeah. to me it's funny. After like a funny line like that, there's just dialogue just keeps continuing and everything keeps going and everything keeps cutting. So I feel like that in order for this movie to be enjoyable, I feel like you need to slow it down to like 75% speed. <laughs> here's here's maybe, the thing. Yeah. It'll be fun. Um, I didn't find this enjoyable at all. I was annoyed and frustrated <laughs> the entire time. This was just agonizing. But. It was agonizing. I have to think about it objectively for a second. If I only watched the first episode... Maybe I'd get the comparison. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. that yeah. like half hour, half like a twenty something, like the high, tw- like the high twenty minute mark, almost a half right. hour. You know, if I only watched that much, maybe that maybe the joke would have wouldn't have gotten old, so to speak. You know what I mean? Right. Because I wonder, how, I wonder how many people watch the first episode of this and say it's so bad it's good. That's my question, mm-hmm. which I think is very possible. Um, I yeah, I think it's possible. But I like think for it, for yeah, it was just Continue, so annoying. Sorry. It, no, no, I'm sorry. It was just I, really I, I've been talking a lot this time, but no, it, this no, is, it's been great. I keep doing it. This is just this was just so agonizingly stupid and annoying that I couldn't even remotely enjoy it. I hated every minute of it. But if I just watched the first episode, maybe I could have appreciated the appreciated this so bad it's good. The ironic enjoyment a little right. more. But as a whole product, yeah. no, I didn't enjoy it. Don't watch it. It's just bad. It's just bad. It, and it was I just horrible. Hate to yeah, say Yeah, I it. thought it was like I laughed a few times because I was like, "What the?" F-? But it wasn't even like a "Oh my god, this is a riot." It was like, "Oh my god, what the fuck am I doing with my life?" <laughs> and then I have to sit and watch after the all fir- of this. after the first seven minutes. I didn't laugh at all because I was just annoyed. Yep. Mm-hmm. And again, and it, my heart goes yep. out to Yoshiyuki Tomino, who can tell a very good story in the right context and especially when you let him breathe and give him time he's right. he's not a guy who can get his whole story out in an hour and a half he's just not that kind of creative right some people can tell and st- it's definitely like not the long form storytelling for him no. i mean it's not the short form storytelling it's, it's the long form for he's him he's a long guy he likes to play the long game he likes to let things breathe some people yes. you don't give this short of a time frame but he did it and this oh this didn't breathe, and neither did the voice actors. No, it's not. My God, it's I, if some of them died during recording, I feel terrible saying that. I am so sorry if if, if you your loved ones voiced a character in this, and if you lost them, I am so sorry. You know, because they died for nothing, and I'm so sorry. How dare you, Rob? You're bringing up old wounds for a lot of our listeners. How dare you? They all have a family member that probably worked on maybe Garzy's wing or something <laughs> like that. I'm sure. You know what? I believe anything now. I, I, I believe anything. This world is such a wacky, wavy place. I don't understand. If anybody has a family member that actually worked on Garzy's wing, um, email us. But also, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> no, don't blame them. They, they needed to make money. 
<laughs> that's right. We all that's have right. bills you to know, pay. You know, you did it for the family. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, you know. Here's the thing: this this whole production probably fed a lot of kids, a lot of staffers. So, if that's the only good thing that came out of it, great. Other than that, yeah, let it die in the past. Yep, I think this is this is just horrible, and it does stand as a good, I guess, measuring stick for what a shitty anime can be. Because this one was just so horrible yeah. that I would I would never even consider watching it again, nor would I recommend it to watch to anybody. No one. Um, past the first five to ten minutes because once you because you, you made a good point about the seven minute mark like once you're about there like you you get it like you get the that's, joke. that's about it you get right. why people think it's so funny but after that it's just agonizing yeah yeah you don't have to put yourself through that like we did no um but you know uh rob to, to to close off this episode i thought i thought i'd do something a little fun sure because you know um in, in the end of the third episode of garzy's wing um, so, uh, Chris is on his motorcycle once again, mm-hmm. and, uh, in the real world, uh, he's on his motorcycle with his girlfriend, and at one point, okay. he, he takes off, he takes off the, the road and starts flying with Garzy's wing, yes, um, and it was stupid. while he's on the mi- motorcycle. Yes, it was very stupid, and the song that played absolutely destroyed me. Uh, it was, um, oh my god, I can't remember the exact melody, but wings it was like, something, he yeah. took off. And it was like, the wings of my heart. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to end with a rendition of Wings of My Heart. Are you ready? I don't know how the, it goes. All right, ready? Here we go. Let's just do it. Ready? Okay, three, okay. Two, two, one. one. The, the wings. wings of my heart. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I started laughing immediately. I'm sorry. We're cutting it here. <laughs> it's bad. Wow, oh my god, what a rousing podcast of anime conversation. Am I right, my compares? Am I right, my weebdom? Anywho, uh, yeah, you can send us a message if you want. Did you like this podcast? Did you hate this podcast? Do you want to kill me? Do you want to drench me in Calaxisaur blood and watch me drink it? That's fine. Just send us an email at badanimepod at gmail.com or DM us on our Instagram at badanimepod, all one word. You can also find us on YouTube as badanime, and you can leave a comment on whatever video you want to leave a comment on we'll read them all anyways we don't care i love you kiss kiss simple equations podcast network